Now, we live in an incredible time. We've actually arrived at a particular time in history whereby uh, things have started to change. In the past, key people of influence uh, were always the ones who are attracting the opportunities of having more fun and making more money, except to become a key person of influence in the past, you needed to be born into the right family, go to all the right schools, and have some really good lucky breaks. And that was the ways that you became a key person of influence. We've arrived at a point where all of that's about to change. And that at this time in history, we can actually move our way and actually start steering the ship to becoming a key person of influence. And today you're going to see many examples of people who have actually directed themselves to the centre of their industry and, uh, and then enjoyed the benefits. Now, why is this changing? 150 years ago, we had the Industrial Revolution. The Industrial Revolution was the, the switch between... Bless you. The, the Industrial Revolution was the switch between the agricultural age and the industrial age. And in the agricultural age, we had lots of people who owned land, and if you owned land, you were probably the wealthiest person around, and everyone came and did their little cottage industry uh, on your land. So we had lots and lots of little entrepreneurs, little butchers, bakers, candlestick makers. As the Industrial Revolution came in, we found that those who could afford factories, those who could afford steam engines and machineries and production lines, they were the ones who actually captured all the wealth. So for the last 150 years, it's the, or I guess you'd call them the factory owners who make all the money. The factory owners came along. Now, the reason that they made so much money uh, and the factory workers didn't make much at all is because the cost of getting into your own factory was so high. So for the last 150 years, if you wanted to start a factory so that you could own your own means of production, you would have needed to spend the equivalent of millions of pounds getting started in your own business. Even 30, 40 years ago, when my grandfather decided he wanted to have a look at starting his own business, it was a huge decision. He would have had to mortgage the house and risk his career and all of those sorts of things. And that was only a few decades ago, uh, the, the, the difference between getting into business. Over the last 10 years, there's been a shift. To own your own factory costs literally maybe two or three grand above and beyond the stuff that's already lying around your own home. So today, to own your own means of production, your own labour, you need a laptop, you need an internet connection, you need a big idea, some passion, uh, you need a, uh, a seat down at Starbucks, <laughs> a, you know, a soy latte. These are the key things for owning your own production these days. So this is why there's been an explosion in the conversation about uh, living your passion. Living your passion wasn't really a conversation you know, prior to 20 years ago, because it just wasn't realistic. You, know, you, you can live your passion after you've had a very successful factory.